is, it's embarrassing, but I'll share because you shared your nudity story. Um, so the situation, I don't know why. I don't know why. People I who just tuned in are like, what? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Out of context. So without any further ado, he is now a part of the two time club on talk culture. He only Nick Wheeler. Boop. Hey. <laughs> What's Hello? up? What's going on, y'all? How's it going? It's going good. I'm a two timer. That's a big deal. I know. Checks in the mail, or I don't know what we give you for two times. Like, uh, all you do. Jelly beans, maybe. A, a, oh, jelly beans. Yes. Okay. Well, welcome back, Thank Nick. We are so, so excited to have you back. Thanks for having me back. I appreciate yeah. it. Awesome. Well, okay. So last week on the show, uh, a first timer, we had Jared Reddick from Bowling for Soup. Yeah. And oh, my God. <laughs> yeah, so when we mentioned our upcoming guest, he's like, oh my gosh, Nick Wheeler, he <laughs> adores you. And I know that there is a rich history with Bowling for Soup and your band. So I was wondering mm -hmm. if you could tell us a little bit about uh, maybe knowing Jarrett or any of the sort. Did he tell any stories? Because I don't want to, I've got, I have got a juicy tale, but if he already oh. told it, I don't want to. No, it was right at the okay. end of the stream when you flashed across the screen and he's like, oh my gosh, tell him I said hi. So get oh my God. Okay. Let's, let's go. Well, I would, this was probably 2001, I'd say. Uh, my band was kind of just getting started and they took us out for a, for like a short, like regional tour. Um, they're from Texas, I believe, and we're from Oklahoma. So we would do like Texas, Oklahoma, Kansas. I think I actually met them in a town called Pittsburgh, Kansas. Um, we played some Irish pub with them. Yeah. <laughs> Speaking of Hollywood, Florida, right. Hollywood, California. Pittsburgh, yeah. Kansas. Okay. Yeah. Sure. Okay. <laughs> All right. You got it. Um, anyway, they, they were a blast. We played, uh, some place called Amar uh, in Amarillo called South beach, mm. but, um, there was no beach. Um, <laughs> there was like a big, like, uh, like drainage ditch out back. I don't know if that's what they were referring to when they named the place, but, okay. um, <laughs> played several shows with them there um those first couple of years um and then actually we played with them a couple of years ago in dallas and i remember being on stage and i don't i forget what song we were playing but we were right outside of a like a hotel like resort thing we were like in this big courtyard area and we look over and somebody's got a female pressed up against the glass doing doing their thing while we were performing it was, it was um, that, wasn't, that, <laughs> that wasn't the story i was gonna tell that was just an anecdote that popped into my mind talking about things we remember yes. yeah yeah <laughs> it's yeah all that kind of shit's flooding back to me um <laughs> but no so we were you know we were opening for them you know we were just you know hawking demo tapes at the shows and homemade t-shirts like that was about the level we were at at the moment um then we kind of you know we start, kind of started getting some radio play in oklahoma and then um we started playing bigger shows with them it was a lot of fun but we were it was still back in the day where i mean you know like every artist and every band has tracks like playback now so they're they always got laptops or something playing some loops or backing vocals or something sure we had a lot of drum loops and a lot of keyboards even in our early songs and you know there was we didn't have a keyboard player it's fucking drum loops so we had to have tracks so this was like i said 2001 so we put we put our tracks on three and a half inch floppy disks <laughs> As you do. and yeah <laughs> And we played them in a uh, in a a, a a Korg keyboard um, that accepted floppy disks, and we were Wait, able to play our tracks on the floppy disks. Wow. Well, because yeah. I, I programmed I programmed all the keys and drum loops on a Korg Triton, um, which was like the the keyboard in the early two thousands, and apparently Ooh. like it's making it's making a comeback, like it's vintage now or some the shit. The teacher is I'm now to my yeah. vocal teacher using one of those when we were in like eighth grade. Oh god. Yeah. The silver, oh. yeah, it's silver. Well, the the older ones have a have a floppy drive and I was able to load one song at a time into the Korg Triton <laughs> and play back the track. So, as you can imagine, we had that like you, you know, I'm trying not to get too like nerdy and techy with this, but I feel like I feel like we can all appreciate the case that you like flip open the top and there's like a row of floppies. Yep. You know what I'm talking about? Oh yeah, M we mine was that. like see-through color coordinated. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 
Yeah. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so we that was that was it. Like that ran our show. That was all <laughs> of our shit. You know, a dozen floppy disks in that case. Well, on one of the Bowling for Soup shows, I left it behind. It, it was my job to Nick. like keep track of it. I know. Come on. I was like 19. Come on. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, I mean, you know how, like, hilarious and just fun Bowling for Soup is. They they picked, they picked it up, and they, they got it for us, and they brought it to the next show in Tulsa, and they held it for ransom. <laughs> they, said that, they said that whoever was in charge of it, somebody had to show up naked to collect the floppy drives. <laughs> like I said... <laughs> I'm in charge of the floppy disk. <laughs> so <laughs> I stripped down in the parking lot and walked over to their bus and knocked on the door. And <laughs> this is turning into an episode of Kids in the Hall. This is amazing. <laughs> yes. Um, yeah, this is downtown Tulsa, Oklahoma. <laughs> like, granted, it was 20 years ago, and downtown Tulsa isn't is you know it wasn't what it is now. Like, there were literal tumbleweeds, so fortunately, there wasn't like a lot of people bustling about. Uh -huh. But I was naked in the parking lot, knocking on their bus door. They come out, and I think, like, <laughs> I, I don't know if I was just trying to like like give it back to them or like make it less awkward or what, but I remember. <laughs> Jumping up on Jarrett naked and just like bear hugging him <laughs> and being like, I'm here for my floppy disks. <laughs> you asked for it. <laughs> yeah, that's what you yeah. asked for. Oh my god. Yeah. <gasps> um, so we got him back. We went on to play a great show, and uh that was it. Yeah. And but, you never forgot it ever again. <laughs> no, well, it's one of those things that I you know, you you mentioned bowling for soup and having him on the show and I was, I might not have ever thought of that again, but you jogged my memory. I was like, oh shit. Like, <laughs> I have, I have a story for a, for a podcast. So yeah, oh, here we are. <laughs> and a great tale at that. Yeah. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Thank you. Just you and tumbleweeds. And I'm hoping like, ooh. <laughs> totally. Just... It was, yeah, it was, it was high noon. In high noon. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> <laughs> noon. Oh, I love that. Oh, well, I, I can't wait to text him after this and, and be like, hey, we got the story. Well, <laughs> I've, I've so. heard, I've heard that he tells the story occasionally. And so I like, I, I definitely like to return the favor and tell it from my perspective whenever wow. whenever i have the chance so thank you for that and thank you for sharing we appreciate oh, that was wonderful all right well as we are want to do on this show i'm going to pivot slightly um oh. you mentioned that you are coming to us live from the new wheelhouse studio so we want to uh get some more updates and and tell us anything um, more you can tell us that you didn't get to last time yeah so i get i mean i guess i forget what i, what I I was on what, like three months ago? So I imagine March. it was a totally different. Okay. Yeah. It was a totally different scenario back then. I hadn't moved in yet. And I, I forget what I told you and what I haven't, but I've been, you know, I've had, I had the opportunity about two years ago to move um, and build a studio in my backyard. And I started down that journey and then COVID happened, um, mm -hmm. which, you know, just kind of everything ground to a halt. And uh, I think it took about a year before we broke ground because permitting was a nightmare. The government was working from home. Uh, so I think, yeah, we finally broke ground like fall of 2020. And this past April, I finally got to move in. So it's it's been a long time coming. Um, it's it's the first time I've had the opportunity to be in a studio that wasn't a spare bedroom. So that's, that's exciting. Yeah. I've been, you know, I've been the bedroom, you know, producer kid since like 1996, um, you know, starting from book, even before the floppy disks, you know, recording on four track, you know, cassette players. Um, yeah. I didn't even, I didn't even upgrade to, to a, a computer um, to like a DAW until I was in high school and I could afford my own desktop that, um, you know, it, it, I, I got a Dell. 
<laughs> dude, you're getting you a Dell. Dell. <laughs> uh, remember that guy? I bought it. Oh. I bought it with my own money that I made from teaching guitar lessons. Nice. Um, yeah. Um, so anyway. And then it just, you know, kind of snowballed from there. I've always kind of been the guy that, you know, records my band's demos and stuff and, you know, does the floppy disks. Um, anyway, so, you know, just over the last several years, I've started working with other artists and producing other bands and stuff. And um, I've just realized that the studio is the part of my job that I've always loved the most. Like, I enjoy traveling. I enjoy, you know, seeing different places. I do enjoy performing, but for me, that's, that's just kind of a bonus. Like I just love being in here and creating and there's no stress of it being a live thing. Um, you know, I listen, I've heard, you know, I listen to, um, like, uh, the armchair expert and Conan O'Brien podcast. Um, Conan O'Brien needs a friend. And he always has SNL people on and they're always talking, you know, a lot of them are talking about how the live aspect of the show just stresses them out. And I'm not comparing myself to anybody in SNL, of course, but I just, I relate to that so much because I get so stressed out in a live environment because like I said earlier, like I'm in charge of all that shit. And if something breaks, like everybody looks at me, I'm just like, (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> and you have to get yeah. naked in a parking lot you know it's like <laughs> see oh my god oh, maybe that's <laughs> maybe that's where it all stems from <laughs> we're we're digging deep here this is like live <laughs> therapy <laughs> yeah anyway um so yeah if i'm here in the studio and something isn't working or something breaks i'm like it's cool like y'all you know step out get some coffee you know i'm gonna chase this down and figure it out it's no big deal um, but in addition to that, I just, I just, you know, uh, I've gotten to be in a lot of studios over the years and work with a lot of great engineers and producers. And it's just always such an inspiring space when you get to be in just a historic room a you know, just a treated room, just a beautiful room. Um, and so I pulled a lot of influence from those various um, studios that I've worked out of. Um, you know, within the parameters of the space that I had to work with in my backyard. Mm -hmm. Um, But, you know, I've, I've created a space that it really feels like me and it feels, it's, it's not in my house. I have a work-life balance somewhat. I'm usually, I was in here this past, so I've been in here seven days a week ever since it was finished, but Mm -hmm. because of, I'm excited, but also because I'm a fucking workaholic. Um, but it's great. I wish I could show you more, but I'm actually working on a desktop computer again, not a Dell. Oh, well, there goes our next but, one. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I can't, I can't pivot desktop. my screen. Um, I can't even show you my dog. He's back here on the couch. Oh, um, yeah, no. here. Hey, Dexter, Wait, Yeah, we here, need bud. the dog. Come on. Come here, honey. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Oh, he's so warm and smelly. Oh. Oh. <laughs> did you meet Dexter last time? I didn't get to. Danica didn't. Oh I my met Dexter. Goodness. There he is. He's he's my 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 fifteen year old um half rat half nerd. <laughs> oh my goodness. Hey, honey. Oh, Calendar model. Let's not. This forget. is yes. This is usually the time of day where he goes from sleeping on the studio couch to sleeping on the living room couch <laughs> while I make dinner. So he's <laughs> you have a studio dog. Like how great yeah. is that? Yeah, oh, and you know, like I said, he's fifteen. He's actually he's in great shape and he's super energetic. But with all the delays, this is going to be like really sad and depressing but with all these like construction delays and just not being able to move into the studio i was like i was like you're my fucking studio dog man i was like you better fucking hang on until this (laughs) thing is done like you are gonna you were gonna make that 40 foot commute through the backyard every goddamn day and he does yeah he does it's raining today though so i'll probably have to carry him back to the house but (laughs) well so cute and thank you for updating us and i can't wait to see when we have you on for the next time in another couple months oh yeah well i I tell you what man like (laughs) what's that we'll get you some matching tuxes for that episode oh yeah yeah (laughs) um he has a tuxedo t-shirt 
Yeah, that was his New Year's outfit. As everyone should. Um, but yeah, I mean, I've been, I've, you know, I, I work with a lot of really great local Nashville artists as well as artists from out of town um, who come, you know, come to Nashville to work with me. And I've been putting a lot of things off and postponing a lot of stuff until this, this place was, you know, finished and, you know, workable. And like I said, um, off camera earlier, the bathroom still isn't finished. My countertop is literally a, a plank of wood just big enough to like put some coffee mugs on. So we still got a ways to go, but um, the studio rooms are functional and um, man, it's, yeah, it's been, it's been loud in here every day. It's been awesome. That is so incredible. And of course, yeah. congratulations. I feel like Danica, you and I should think of something <clears throat> unique and fun that we can send to your studio so you can <laughs> have something from talk culture. So Danica, yeah. we need to brainstorm. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I'd love okay. that. Yes. Well, I and I get you know I got I got swag. Where how do I? There it is. Yeah. I got swag, so I got to send you guys some stuff. I even made coffee with a local roaster here in town. Ooh, um, I'm in. Yeah. Yes. Pick me. So yeah, we'll we'll exchange some swag. It'll be great. Done. It, it's happening. Yeah, it's cool. happening. Well, um, okay. So this is another like pivot that maybe you can tell us a little bit about because I I don't know okay. if this is actually true or not. Okay. Oh so boy. yesterday on my Instagram, you know, I put up the picture. I'm like, okay, tomorrow night we have Nick Wheeler. Okay. So I get a message from Matt Fuller, who is amazing <laughs> guitarist extraordinaire, now plays with Puddle of Mud. Are you familiar with Matt okay. Fuller? Okay. Okay. The name so, sounds so familiar. Okay. So he, here's where this is going, right? He said, okay. oh, you have Nikki Six Pack on your stream. And I'm like, <laughs> Nikki Six Pack? I'm not sure what that means. So then it got me thinking, first of all, can you confirm you were at one time Nikki Six Pack? <laughs> Is that a thing? Absolutely. I there, <clears throat> there are still some usernames out there on various websites that I can't change that are still Nikki Six Pack when I sign in. Um, it's, it stems from, I mean, I... <clears throat> I mean, I, I grew up on 80s hair bands. Like, I had all the tapes. Um, mm -hmm. I've got a Def Leppard tattoo and a Bon Jovi tattoo. Um, I don't have a Motley Crue tattoo, but, you know, they were they were in there, too. Um, they were in the mix. Um, and it was because of Nikki Six, and obviously my name's Nick. So I, I just, I, for some reason, I just, I thought he looked badass playing his Thunderbird bass. So because of that, I got a Firebird guitar, <laughs> and it, I just played one for you know, over 20 years now. And it, it, yeah, I think they, you know, my friends started calling me like Nikki or Nikki six or whatever. And then I was a, I like beer snob, like when okay, I was younger too. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, I, I still am, but like, I drink a lot less beer now because of my age and my size. So, <laughs> <laughs> um, so I I think it was Tyson, the singer in my band, who coined the nickname. And I was like, oh, my God, that's amazing. At the time, it was so fitting. Um, and it just kind of stuck. And it's like it's like picking a band name or getting a tattoo. Like, it's something that you pick out when you're young. And then later, you're like, eh, whatever. Like, it, it kind of starts to lose its meaning. But you, and you just start to associate it with what it represents. And that's it. Like, you don't actually think about what you know the words that make it up but yeah that's a thing that's i, yeah, I love it it's totally yeah. accurate yeah because it got danik <laughs> and i like kind of thinking about our old like aim screen names oh which, yeah um i'm sure danica I, yours was what friday t13 friday t13 yeah right which is i'm the coolest <laughs> so good mine crasher kitty crasher right? kitty yeah. Crasher Kitty for no reason. Don't ask I'm not me. I'm really sure where that came from. Don't ask me. Am I going to crash was this, something? Was this on AIM? Yes, oh. this was on like the nice. yeah, good old. And what yeah. was your what was your what was your MySpace? Oh, my MySpace um, was and a live journal. Oh yeah, we had. The oh yeah, a go live ahead, Nick. Journal. <laughs> <laughs> I don't. I don't know if I don't know if I had. Did I have a MySpace? I don't. You remember. didn't have a MySpace. Must not have been that cool. <laughs> well, no. What's What's funny? I remember playing like the the MySpace like like one year anniversary party. It was like us and Dashboard Confessional. So like we were already like a touring like active band when MySpace was becoming a thing. So at that point, you know, 
we were traveling and I didn't have my Dell with me. It was like 2002. <laughs> so like right. you couldn't like keep up with the MySpace on the road. Like you would literally have to use the computer in the lobby of like the Hampton Inn or wherever we were mm-hmm. fucking staying. Um, so k baby. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, uh, but I do remember my aim screen name. Um, by the time I got my Dell, I was already in a, a different incarnation of the band, but the name, the all American rejects was already a thing. Okay. However, we did spell rejects with a K. Okay. <laughs> so my, my screen name, well, I had AOL of course. Like, um, and I think, you know, it was back in the you've got mail days. Oh, that um, was good. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> that was really good. <laughs> Thank you. Um, so I think it was, it was the rejects with a K mm-hmm. at AOL.com. That was my email address. Um, the one that came after it was Nikki Sixpack at whatever cable company I had at the time. Um, but before it was the rejects with a K and that was my AIM name. That's uh, it's very good. Yep. I was um, kicked off of AOL, so I was a CompuServe. How do you kid. get kicked off of AOL, Nick? <laughs> um, <laughs> so, this is oh my god, this is so embarrassing. This is it's embarrassing, but I'll share because you shared your nudity story. Um, so the situation, I don't know why. I don't know why people I who just tuned in are like, what? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Out of context. So. <laughs> I had AOL, like I had the CDs, you know, like you would get all the free hours, right? Like pop them in free hours, right? So I sign up, crash your kitty. And then I went into like one of the chat rooms as you do, but I went into a teacher, like um, a teacher chat room and I impersonated a professor and was giving math advice to people probably older than myself. And I didn't even yeah. know what the Pythagorean theorem was. And so somebody then messaged me and they're like, Are, we need your credentials. And then the phone rings. And this was in one of those times when the phone rings, you're disconnected, right? Like I was like, going to say, okay. how did the phone ring if you were online? Right. So <laughs> disconnected, disconnected. And it was AOL to call my parents shut up yes to ask yes it was freaking wild and and that was it i was never allowed on ever again so wow yeah for impersonating a teacher how how did that work they sent you discs in the mail Mm -hmm. and they were like the gatekeeper to the internet you couldn't just get on the internet you had to go through aol like what even was that I don't rude capitalism. I don't know. Capitalism. <laughs> yeah. You want the math advice? I'll give it to you. A plus B. Wait, A squared plus B squared equals C squared. There you go. That's a real Lord thing. That, that is that is that's the Pythagorean the Pitha- theorem. That's the Pythagorean theorem. Yeah. You I know, know what's it now. Funny? I was I was just talking about the Pythagorean theorem yesterday. In Bullshit. what context? <laughs> like why? <laughs> i feel like i was talking i was talking to a friend about what what like math we use today that we learned in school it's not and i feel i was (laughs) i was i was trying to figure out i'm putting a sign on the door of the studio it says wheelhouse studio or whatever i got a quote for a certain size and i was trying to figure out like okay, if it's 14 by four and I want it to be 24 by X, how do I figure out X? Like if you take 14 and stretch it to 24, what does four become? And I was like, is that the Pythagorean theorem? Like, (laughs) that's what I tell my husband. (laughs) I don't know. Wait a minute. My husband is is a structural engineer, like knows all of the crazy shit math, like has the, uh, it, it makes zero fucking sense to me at all. Yeah. Like I, yeah. I actually have dyscalculia, so I can't do what everyone calls simple math. And I'm like, mm, simple for who though? Yeah. Let's be fair. <laughs> I'd like to thank my phone and my graphic calculator for, you know, getting me through. I mean, like totally. they, they, they should teach you how to balance a checkbook and do taxes, but they're like, well, but if this totally. guy had five beers and this one had eight, you know, it's like, well, I guess they didn't say beer in high school. But if there, <laughs> that no, would be if there, if there are oh. two trains traveling towards each other and one of them is A squared oh. plus B squared. I know. <laughs> but, <laughs> but you know what? I actually did figure out the answer to my problem, but I didn't use any kind of equation. And I was always like, 
like in school they're like show your work and like if if you figured it out without using their formula even if the answer was right like you got it wrong they were yeah. so like, mad that's that answer is right like i figured it out like yeah in real life i'm not going to use this fucking equation yeah. like i figured it out like <laughs> you taught me how to like you taught me how to learn and do math like yay good for you like mm-hmm. yeah well <laughs> Yeah, I don't know. I, I just, I remember like my senior year of high school, they put me in something called liberal arts math, which is for people that like needed. That's like, like an oxymoron. A, is it? I, I don't know. I like, don't know. My, my, art, my high school, art math? Liberal arts math. Yeah. Where, where it yeah. was more like tangible things. And it helped me a lot because okay. I can't just look at a triangle and be like, let me scalene it i don't know oh. i'm just you know i failed yeah. algebra the first time so i've got no space to talk. i failed statistics but again, three times theater major well, and now professional director so fuck math <laughs> I don't totally <laughs> i actually love statistics i didn't have to take any math after 10th grade like that was that, that was all i needed to take to graduate but um i i took statistics in 11th grade and it was like two things oh. you learn like averages what, what's that called medians yeah i can't believe we're right. talking about fucking math everybody who tuned in, in the beginning is gone <laughs> no no they're also here there are actually more people joining now and we apologize oh, or maybe sweet. we encourage I'm, I'm glad, all the I'm glad they're joining us now for the math talk. <laughs> yeah everyone there, there will be a quiz for <laughs> um if, if everyone could ready their scantrons um there will be a <laughs> Scantron. Oh my god. But uh oh man. C C C C C C C C Um uh so oh speaking of algebra, I, <laughs> so I didn't have to take any I didn't have to speaking of algebra, I didn't have to take any math after 10th grade. So when I when I that one year I tried to go to college, I took what's called algebra review. And like two days in, I'm like, yeah, I got to drop this shit. I <laughs> never learned any of this. If I did, it's it's been three years. Like, no fucking way, man. So, yeah, well, I got out of there. Let, let me that was the last time in. I did I did math. But, yes, but please, that being said, please take here, us somewhere I got it. else. I got it. Pivot. I got it. Right, Pivot. right. So being like a producer, engineer, all that jazz, you do have to know math because, you know, you have to know what time, you know, something is in. If it's in 4-4 time, right? That's math, right? Am I mathing? Math? I do. I do. I do math a lot. If I'm trying to figure out delay times in milliseconds, I take 60,000 divided by the tempo. And that gives me how many milliseconds are in one bar. I divide that by four. It gives me how many milliseconds are in one beat, etc. So yeah, I do. I actually do do a lot of math, math. but I, I, use, math. I do like three things. Like <laughs> I, if I, if I taught a course and the math that I used, it would be like half a day max and that's like if I we watched a movie too you know what i mean like if i showed a video <laughs> and then taught the equations you know what i mean like we watch goodwill hunting and then we watch that and then we do the math perfect i love goodwill hunting what a great movie okay well danica why don't you uh ask your next question and then um i see some in the comments so we'll get to yeah. those after all right so yesterday um all american rejects posted a photo with uh the meeting of tom cruise so we wanted to ask about that experience um and uh, if you have a favorite tom cruise film Ooh, oh man okay uh this is layered um <laughs> you said <laughs> you said you're in rally right yeah okay it might have been Rally. It might have also been Richmond, Virginia. It was. Yeah, it was much. in that in that vicinity. It could um, have been Miami, uh, no. Ohio. <laughs> Miami, Ohio. There is one there, right? Miami, okay. Ohio. There's a there's a Miami, Oklahoma, but they they pronounce it Miami, so it's Miami, Oklahoma. Okay. Got it. Okay. Got it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's fucking ridiculous. Um. So. <laughs> Yeah, I wanted to repost that so bad that I didn't want to like feel like braggy. Like we got to fucking meet Tom Cruise once, and it was You're when we played. What's? You're <laughs> yeah, it's yeah, very brag. topical right now. Um, we played a NASCAR event in like 2009 or something, and we got to ride in the pace cars. Like it was incredible. Shit. I had I had so much fun that day. Um, it rained, but 
we still got to play. I, it was very unsafe. It was awesome. Uh, <laughs> but Tom Cruise was there for some reason. You know, Days of Thunder. Like, I don't know if he's still just milking that and just showing up at these things or what. But <laughs> it was incredible. It was like, it was very quick. I don't think he even knew, like, what he was doing. We were just like, oh, my God, can we take a picture? He's like, okay. And he just did the thing. <laughs> you know, uh, he came up to all of, like, all of our, like, chin, like chins at, the, like, max. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> and, but the the six seconds that I spent with him was delightful. He was wonderful. Life-changing. Okay. Um, yep. Yeah. And we have that picture. Uh, again, something that I probably never would have thought of again unless you brought it up, which is psychotic to say. <laughs> but, but yeah, like that was that was that was surreal. Um, favorite Tom Cruise movie. Um, I love Interview with a Vampire. Oh, yeah. Classic, classic. Yep, yep, yep. Um. I mean, being from Oklahoma, I have to say The Outsiders. Oh, my God. I forgot about that. Legally obligated. <laughs> which yes, I, correct. <laughs> which I just heard about today um, listening to the Parks and Rec podcast. Rob Lowe was saying that Tom Cruise had a tooth removed. And from a, like an, he went to an Oklahoma dentist to have a tooth pulled so that in a fight scene, he could look like he really lost a tooth, which is that's fucking dedication. That's like hot. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know like it, um, this is this is not a knock to tom cruise because obviously he's a mega star um but you know he has like three front teeth like have you ever looked at his front teeth there's three of them what do you mean oh yeah like the the center line is like off it's oh. off center yeah and is is that because of the oklahoma dentist <laughs> maybe i should like, find out you know prematurely that was actually a baby that that was my first thought. I was like, oh, that's why. I was like, because of the outsiders and the fight and the Oklahoma dentist. Yeah. Um, <laughs> man, what? Wh- okay. Let's, let's, let's run the list down. What else has go. he done? Risky business. Cocktail. Oh, cocktail. Cocktail. Yeah. That's the one. Uh, yeah. I mean, okay. All the Top Mission Impossibles, Top Gun. Yeah. Yeah. What else? So, so the question is, Nick. When obviously, like you're in your studio now, but after the stream, are you gonna do the risky business dance move into your studio? I feel like you have to, right? Like rite of passage. You gotta be like carrying Dexter and just zip your. Oh, Dexter can <laughs> be the broom. Oh my broom. god! But he amazing. also needs like matching underwear. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, I'm gonna get on Amazon and and order some tidy whities. It'll be here between between four and seven a.m. I'm sure. Uh, <laughs> tomorrow i will risky business into the studio goddamn right <laughs> i got the wayfarers in my in my closet yeah it's, it's happening oh my god can you imagine dexter and tidy whities yes um, and i love it it's my favorite thing i've ever he's thought the appropri- of. he's the appropriate age for them <laughs> okay <laughs> now i'm doing dog well, math in my head okay i'm sorry yeah. 100, 105 105 oh. Oh, wow. Older than the queen. Yeah. yeah. Take that queen. <laughs> Where's his fucking platinum jubilee? Yeah. Right. <laughs> Next on the docket, Dexter's oh platinum gosh. jubilee. <laughs> Done. Done. I would love to see who, who would perform at Dexter's platinum jubilee besides the All-American Rejects. Who else do we get? The queen's Aww. corgis. <laughs> oh, thank you. <laughs> totally. Um, you know what's funny? He... He doesn't respond to other animals because he's like, he's been around like band dudes his whole <laughs> life. Like I literally, I rescued him like after like a messy breakup. I was like, yeah, this is smart. I'm going to get a dog. Um, and not even considering the fact that I'm a touring musician. And then I was like, oh, fuck. Like, <laughs> <laughs> so like six months later, we go on warp Tour and I'm like, hey, guys, is it cool if I bring my dog? Like, you don't have to, you're not going to take care of him. Like, I don't trust you guys to take care of him anyway. But is it cool if I bring my dog? Mm -hmm. And from that point forward, like, he's just been around band dudes. Like, that was his formative years. That was, like, 12 years ago. So he, yeah, he, he loves being around band dudes. So he, his list is, every time there's an artist in here or a band in here, he's obsessed and so content. He just, yeah. He, he really, he's like a support dog because he's so supportive. 
Absolutely. Everybody loves him. He loves he loves all the humans that come through here. And he's never more content. Like he snores so loud and sleeps <laughs> so soundly in the studio. Not at night in bed, but in the studio. Like that's where he's most relaxed. Um, so yeah, his everybody that's been through here, that would be on his Platinum Jubilee performance list. Let me ask you this, because you know how like um engineers, producers like Timbaland, right? So he'll be like, Okay, come over and make like a raindrop noise and we're gonna put it in the track. Are you gonna have like Dexter snoring Sorry. hidden like in the back of a track? Well, he only he he only wakes up and, and like shakes and tap dances on the wood floor when I'm trying to cut a fucking vocal. So he is in he is in like every song I've ever produced. Does he get a he, credit? Either. Actually, we I do make we do make the joke a lot around here about you know cutting him in on publishing, um, just because of his inspiration. But but yeah, either his snoring or his tap dancing is literally in every song I've ever I've ever recorded in here. I'm obsessed. I love it. Okay, dog's best friend. Oh, yeah, Danica has two doggies. Um. What you got? I have a little black lab mix. Um, she's mixed with mm. a, a staffy, so she's got an underbite, and she's about. <gasps> Oh, this it's, thing. it's a, she looks like you shrunk a black lab and gave it an underbite. She's ridiculous. Yeah. Dexter has an underbite. That's that's a prerequisite for me from here on out. Every dog I ever have will have an underbite. <laughs> but I also have a golden retriever who's um he's he's the sweetest, dumbest idiot. He's he's such a moron and he's so so sweet and he's so dumb. What are their names? Uh Kiri is the little black one, um, okay. little black lab, and Hamish. Because we're very Scottish. Okay, what are what are the? Oh yeah, oh, I was gonna say what are uh, those are two names I've never heard before. So Kiri is um, basically a a version of the name Kira or Kirin, um, which okay. is uh, Gaelic for uh, like the little black haired one. <laughs> so real creative. <laughs> <laughs> effectively, she's black. Like. <laughs> She's the, the Gaelic world. word for Blackie is effectively her name. And then Hamish is um, Gaelic. It just, it's one of the ways you can say James in Gaelic. <laughs> it sounds Amish. Hamish. <laughs> Hamish. Hamish. Yeah. Hamish. I, I was yeah. walking through some, I don't even know what, maybe a grocery store or something. And I heard this woman in a really thick Scottish accent calling for her son Hamish. And I went, <laughs> Don't say anything. Don't say anything. Okay, so <laughs> so I always like I would mean it as a compliment, but I always stop myself when somebody says like, "Oh, my my son's name is Dexter" or something like that. I'm like, "Oh my god, my dog's name is Dexter." You know what I mean? Like, I'm like, what would they think about that? How are they gonna take or, this? or like, yeah. <laughs> These are my children. Like right. these are my yeah. children. So it's it's Yeah, I don't want I don't want actual children. I just want these exactly. kind of children for the rest of my life. So I I mean I I would mean it as a compliment, but I don't know how other people would take it. I mean our one of our sugar gliders is named Beetlejuice. So thankfully we're not walking through a store. Beetlejuice. I forgot Beetlejuice. you have sugar gliders. <laughs> and I won't say it a third time. Yes. 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 <laughs> certainly do. Beetlejuice. They are I won't say it a third time. Oh, that's great. <laughs> I'm did I, did I did I tell you about the other time I was in Tulsa and uh, played a sugar glider convention? They have conventions, Heather. Why are you not doing them right now? I I feel I'm upset chipped. with you. Um, <laughs> I'm very tell me more. <laughs> let let me let me let me let me trace this back. Um, okay. We didn't play the convention, mm -hmm. but. Uh, we were there. It was it was a festival um, we were doing in Tulsa. It was like us in Paramore, I think. This was like 2007, 2008, maybe forever ago. <laughs> Downtown Tulsa, still tumbleweeds. <laughs> um, we were ain't staying, going anywhere. <laughs> yeah, we were staying at like a Holiday Inn or something, and there was a sugar glider convention going on, and they. I don't know if there was like a if it was at the the hotel, or if they were putting people up at this hotel, but the lobby was flooded with people who just had sugar gliders in cages on their shoulders, like oh, everywhere. Oh. It was insane. You guys need to do this. Uh, 
I, I don't know whether my two would be good in that scenario. They're, they're very like, you don't know until you try. Yeah, this is, this is true. I would love to host a panel for them though. Can you imagine? Like, uh, this is kind of my dream, Nick. Um, I'm going to get, I'm going to get on AOL here in a little bit. We're done. Okay. And I'm, I'm going to look up, I'm going to look up when we played D Fest in Tulsa. Cause that was the festival. And then I'm going to figure out what the Sugar Ladder Convention around that time in Tulsa was. I'll let okay. you. I'll let you know, and we'll find out if they still do it. If they do, you got to go next year. Yes, please. And I mean, I know you and you, you said Paramore, right? I know you guys are playing When We Were Young. I'm thinking maybe you skip that. You go to the Sugar Glider Festival instead. You know what <laughs> or I mean? Maybe. Or maybe. maybe there'll be a sugar let sugar glider convention happening in Vegas at the same time. It's possible. And it just turns out all these years we've just been following these conventions around unknowingly. Right. <laughs> right. You, you've been on the circuit. Of... Somebody we work with has been like plotting this for 15 years. Okay. Let's take a moment and actually think. What this would be, Nick, if this was really what was happening. Somebody deep inside All American Rejects has been having you follow the loop of the show. <laughs> how meta is this? Can, can you imagine this? Like, how different would your life be? So, like... <laughs> Taking a bizarre turn. This is, this is what we do. It gets oh real weird. God. Okay. Oh, you know what? You know what I should have done? Um... I've got a big, I've got like a life-size elf in the house and I see your elf back there. I should have brought him. Life-size elf. <laughs> well, yeah. I say life-size, life-size to what elf would, would be in real life. Yeah, he's like three feet tall. Like, my yeah, height. Yeah. 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 Oh my gosh. Yeah. How do you feel yeah, about cats? Like a, about cats? Well, doesn't elf eat cats? Yeah. Cause they're delicious. Oh, uh, right. He puts them in sandwiches. Yeah. <laughs> I love Yum. I love sandwiches. Okay, yeah, same. I think we can all <laughs> just not cat sandwiches. Okay, <laughs> not to go down a crazy I'm path sorry, up here. Seemingly, this comment. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Pine Squirrel is the band's tour manager. So, so um, before we go into the game, this question has been patiently waiting. Mm. Um, what songs that weren't singles would you have liked to have been a single? Oh man. Um, it's funny because when you're when you're when you're a band or an artist or whatever and you're making a record, like your favorite songs are never the ones that people respond to the most. Um uh, on our last record, Kids Kids in the Street, which nobody bought, um, there was a song called Gonzo, which um is one of our favorites. It's kind of it kind of tells like like it's kind of, it's kind of like a like a biopic of the band biopic 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 Bi yeah yeah um it's 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 like just a historic retelling of like the band it's it's a cool story it's got a cool vibe to it it's a lot of fun to play live we play it live just for ourselves nobody cares <laughs> it's a lot of fun that would have been great um huh what was the name of the poet that did Gonzo poetry? Oh my gosh, he had the three. That's who names. it was. That's who it was named after. Actually, um, we we put it in a documentary about him. Shit, I should know this. <laughs> I should too. Let me jump on AOL. Hold on. It is. Uh... Well, it was the song isn't about him. It was named after him for some reason. You'd have to ask Tyson about that. But uh, Hunter S. Thompson. Yeah. Okay, yeah. There it is. Yeah. We got there. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yep. You know, it's that guy. He had that face. You know. Friends with Johnny Depp. <laughs> he, had, he, had, he had a face, I think. He didn't be weird, but I think he had one. Um, uh, I mean, there's probably a lot. Um, I don't know. I, I'd have to look at a track listing. I haven't. <laughs> That's fine. You gave us an answer. You gave us an answer. Okay. Um, so this next okay. question isn't a question. It's just a person saying, interact with me. I don't know how we do that. Like, da, 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 da. I don't know. We're interacting with you. I, I don't inter know. Inter inter interface with me. Is this yeah. like a demolition man kind of scenario? Like, 
I, I, I don't about? I don't know what's happening. Mm, but uh and then this person's mentioning Hunter S. Thompson. Thank you. Okay. So um we interacted, <laughs> we answered a couple of questions. Okay. So, we interacted. <laughs> <laughs> we did the thing. <laughs> we, we did it. Hooray, hooray, hurrah. Okay, so let's pivot ever so slightly into our game hey, of would you rather. <laughs> Holy so, shit, 50 minutes. I know, this is this time, time flies. So, uh, time flies again, when you're talking about math and sugar glider conventions. <laughs> listen, I don't even know what we're going to clip from this. This has been all over I the just... place. <laughs> <laughs> like, Wait, have, we, have, we start, have we started yet? No, we're not, are we live? Oh my God. <laughs> are people watching this? Okay. So, oh shit, uh, this is the show? Oh, I thought is... we were just warming up. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, fuck. We're doing a cool 45, then we'll get the show started. Okay, so yeah. what would you rather? <laughs> There's no wrong answers. Whatever you choose to be correct is correct. So let's bring up okay. the graphic and the first mm -hmm. one. Would wow. you rather receive a Dundee Award or play with Scrantonosity? Scranton Scrantonicity. Scrantonicity. Yeah. Okay. Um, if I played with Scrantonicity, it would have to be only when like somebody paid them to do non-police songs because police songs are fucking hard, man. They're like, tough. They're tough. I, I thought that was super ballsy of them to like, I mean, that, that fucking chord voicing for every breath you take, like, give me a break. Like you need, <laughs> no. not happening. Okay. But, uh, what was it? It was Phyllis's wedding when they played, uh uh you are meant for me or i was meant for you or whatever mm -hmm. um by jewel because roy paid him 20 bucks i'd have to make sure people were paying him to play like easier songs than police songs regardless okay. of the instrument like drums bass guitar it's they're all very complicated mm -hmm. so i'll take a dundee and and what would it be for um, i don't know okay having uh, the most awesome dog I was trying to think of something with my dog. Yeah, it, it would have to do with him. Yeah, and we will of have course nothing, nothing to do with me. No, no, no. Uh, it, we, we will of course give you this award at Chili's. So you just let us know what the nearest Chili's is. Oh, so weird random fact. So I think it was last weekend or the weekend before. I was doing a convention with three of the guys from Chips, and I'm like looking at all three of them, and I'm like going down the line. Eric Estrada, Larry Wilcox, guy. In the end, I'd never met him before, and. I'm like, he looks so familiar. So his name is Robert Pine. Turns out he is uh, Chris Pine's father. But I was going to make a joke about like related to Chris Pine. Yeah. Yes. That's right. I That's real. That. Okay. It, it's real. Is but he... I was, I was looking at him and I'm like, how do I, I, I'd seen chips, but I'm like, I know you from something. And it turns out he played Jim's dad on the office. So it was like, oh, oh shit. Yes. Oh. Yeah. It didn't oh, click no during that moment, okay. so I never got to tell him. But <laughs> we're great on the office. <laughs> yeah. Well, I I just found out. I'm watching Stranger Things, and I just put it together thanks to Instagram that Murray is the magician from Nelly's party. What? <laughs> what? <laughs> Do you rem Nelly. remember the remember the magician they get like for like Nelly's party when they're like um. When like Robert California is like, why why are they being so mean to the magician? <laughs> Interesting. That's Murray it, on Brett Stranger Geller. Things. Okay. Yep. Interesting. I love him. And Stranger yeah. Things is going to come back in a couple of questions. So um, let's okay. let's move along. Okay. Oh, we're moving. Okay. I used to work at a rope factory. Not there's no such thing. I'm <laughs> going to rewatch this tacos. Yeah. All right, Danica, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> would you, oh God. Would you rather perform on stage wearing your first ever Halloween costume or perform on stage dressed as your favorite wrestler? Oh, wrestler, hands down. I don't I don't remember my first Halloween costume. It was probably Superman. I was a Superman kid. Mm -hmm. I'm a, I'm a DC guy, sorry, MCU people, but um I, I wore my Supergirl costume every single second. I love the movie I Supergirl. Love I had a I had a bootleg copy on VHS. It was, I had in, I had my like first like funny feelings about that movie. Was, yeah. A lot of us did. Yeah. <laughs> wink, wink. Um, definitely favorite wrestler, Ultimate Warrior. 
Oh, okay. And then, okay, perfect. Done. Great. Yeah. Love it. Right. Living. Okay. Here's the next one. Would you rather, so, okay, switch set list <laughs> with Weezer or switch set list with Billing for Soup? I, um, sorry guys, I do know more Weezer songs. Um, but it's because there's, I mean, there's like a, there's like a five to 10 year difference, like, um, in, you know, 94 through like 96, like the, that was my heyday of like locking myself in my room, you know, as an only child and playing guitar, I'm only child too. Uh, you okay. know, Oh, high five. Yeah. Whoop. Okay. Um, yeah. Um, locking myself in my room and playing guitar along with you know my cds and the radio and stuff and that was that was weezer and like mm -hmm. i love those fucking songs especially those first two records um Feeling bowling for soup you know came around a, a few years later and we were playing shows with them so that was that was a little different um i'll i'll, I'll learn them though if they want to let me like play <laughs> with them sometime like if they come to nashville or i find myself at south beach in amarillo again i don't know <laughs> South Beach, Amarillo. Woo! Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I've been through Amarillo way too many times. I don't Is understand. Is it on I-40? Yes. It's the yeah. fucking worst. I'm sorry. I'm, and I'm not that sorry. Uh, I can't understand how there would be any kind of venue there. Did you, did you ever stop at the Big Texan and eat the 72-ounce steak? Why would I do that? <laughs> <laughs> Why would I do that? Um, I think it was, I don't know if it was the exact same location, but this concept was made famous, I think, by the great outdoors um, with John Candy and Dan Aykroyd, which I, was on TV the other day. Um, thank you, Freeform. Um, <laughs> thank you, Freeform. Non-sponsored. Yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> uh, if you eat 72 ounces of steak in 60 minutes, it's free. Uh <laughs> But then I you go to the hospital. Like, I mean, like, yeah. why? But no, it's funny is that, like, you flip through the book and you look at the people who have accomplished this feat. And I think they have to put their, their name, uh, their age, and I think they have to put their weight, too. That makes so, sense. I'm willing to bet always that the like, guy has won it. It's always very small people that do this. Joey Chestnut. Love it. <laughs> yeah. Um. Danica, I, I'm going to read the next one and then you're okay. going to read the one after. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So, oh, right. Okay. Question. Sorry. I, yeah, no, no, I no. have a tendency it, to go on tangents. It's Sorry. okay. We can talk about steak all you want, but uh, okay. Here's the next one. Would you rather join a secret society of famous people named Nick? Now, here we go. We have Nick Cage, Nick Offerman. I'm assuming there's Nick Lachey back there. I don't know. Nick Frost? It, it, Nick Frost. It's secret. Nick Kroll. Or be a member of the Wheeler family on Stranger Things. It's so funny. I've, I, okay. I never went to school with anybody else named Wheeler. I don't really know anybody else named Wheeler. So when Stranger Things came out, I was like, whoa, like that's, <laughs> is that like an 80s name? Like what, like what's the significance? Like where did they get that? Cause I don't know, like where are they pulling this name from? Um, so yeah, it always catches me off guard. You're uh, in the photo. I don't know if you realize. I know. I know. It's so good. Oh my god. Definitely fits in. Um, this it is in. tough because I'm I'm currently watching Stranger Things, so I'm kind of immersed in this whole like culture here. But I'm also a sucker for Nick Offerman and Nick Cage, so I'm gonna go Secret oh. Society. Okay. Mm, yeah. That's all you can yeah. say though, because it's a secret. Right. So, oh shit. So this yeah, is the last time I can talk about you've it. You've said too much. <laughs> yes. So, um they, they've already kicked me out. <laughs> no. No, you're, you're just just keep it down, okay? Just, just All right, Danica, okay. move, move move along. <laughs> okay. All right. Would you rather have an emotional support slug or have an emotional support flamingo? I'm not a bug guy. You're not a bug. Look how cute he is. No. <laughs> I will say slugs are more transportable. <laughs> I also don't. I know, but yeah, whenever you see those like pictures or videos of people who like bring a fucking emotional support peacock on the plane, it's like, <laughs> give me a break, but also kind of like good for them. Like how the <laughs> fuck did they pull that off? I, you could hide a slug and you wouldn't even have to like have the conversation about like, it's he's for my anxiety. Like I can't go anywhere without him. I, I, I got to go flamingo. Like, because imagine the looks I'd get. <laughs> yeah. 
That's what would you name him? What would you name your emotional support flamingo? Um, Pinky. Um, what's what do you call something with one leg? Uh, was peg leg? No. You know, St Stumpy. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> okay, done. That's that's probably that's... offensive. I'm sorry. Um, they don't have one leg. They just stand on one leg. So what? What? Yeah. What would you call them? Pinky McBalance Bird. I don't know. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> I'm done. Stable. Yeah. Stable. <laughs> it would not be nice to be stable. Well, call, okay. Call him Slug. Call him Slug. Slug <gasps> Sluggo, the emotional support Sluggo flamingo. flamingo. Done and done. Yeah. Okay. Okay. All right. Here's the next one that's not as off. Well, I guess it's a little oh. strange. Okay. Would you rather perform in a stage that's always spinning or perform in a stage at a 30 degree angle? Nope. Uh-uh. 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 Spinning. Uh -uh, I can hang. Okay. Wait, how how fast are we spinning? Let's say. Also, what what picture? What picture is this? Is that okay. Will Ferrell? What it, is, it, it's it's Will Ferrell when he was doing the Christmas song, and he got so <laughs> sick from spinning, he started spewing everywhere. <laughs> yeah, from SNL. Yeah. I haven't seen that one. Oh, it's one of my favorites. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, I love that. Um. Yeah, I'm not a fan of the angle. Angle. Um, so yeah, let's go spinning. Spin a Rooney, it is. You we'll got it. Really yeah. slow. Yeah, slow. Mm -hmm. well, like like one of those restaurants at the top of a building. Yeah. It's just like, yeah. Or Hamilton. That'd be My husband too. knows how to engineer that. Just saying, he has. He would. <laughs> Tell him the Pythagorean theorem. That shit. Oh let's, hell no. Let's, let's make this. <laughs> Next. Like, what in the fuck are you talking about? That's Next, not. Does not apply at all. Next. <laughs> Next one. Just, so go. It doesn't compute. Next one. We got four more. We got four more. Okay, let's do it. Okay. All right. Would you rather have a studio shaped like Wonderworks or have a studio shaped like a Hobbit hole? What is Wonderworks? Is that like Ripley's? It looks it's, like Ripley's. Yeah. It's it's a like tourist attraction in Orlando where okay Nick is commenting about math and the <laughs> comments husband. now great. <laughs> um. So it, it it's a building that's upside down. It's completely upside down. Not the things inside of that. it. I don't, I'm not a, I'm not an engineer, Nick. Yeah, let's ask Nick. <laughs> <laughs> How'd they do that, babe? <laughs> yeah, I, I, I don't know. It's just upside down. Um, does, does Lionel Richie live there? He, um, oh. He's dancing on the ceiling. Oh, Lord. Yeah, yeah. I love that. I love that so much. I, you know, I, I'm not a big, uh, I'm not a big, like, hobbit slash lord of the rings guy but that looks fun like that looks super inviting and vibey i'm gonna go hobbit hole okay looks i i yeah. yeah i like the vibes it's green you know yeah it's yeah. naturey like yeah okay done. okay we still got a couple more because for some reason i imagine the acoustics are great in there like like oh, being yeah. built into like like a hill See, I love that you're considering that. So I would. The, the question the is: studio. Is Frodo a baritone, more of a tenor? I'm not too I sure. Do a tenor. Okay. He's a real little guy. Well, they're 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 rather small, so you'd think the voices would be higher than usual. So yeah, I'm gonna go tenor as well. Okay. Love it, love it. Okay, here's the next one. Would you rather write a song based off of your last text conversation, or write a song based off of your last vacation spot? Well, I don't remember where I went on vacation last, um, but my last text conversation was about, um, it was about an Amazon return. So that's probably not good either. Um, <laughs> I was hoping Amazon, it was something that mundane. That's Amazon, great. Amazon, <laughs> Jeffrey Be Oh, well, well, there is the Jeffrey Bezos song by- uh, Oh, yes. You know, Bill Barnum, so. Mm -hmm. Oh, I don't know that, okay. But um, also, um, I talked about the curtains I'm installing in the studio. Um, so yeah, neither one of those is good. Um, where did I go on vacation last? Amarillo. Man. Miami. <laughs> Miami. Yeah. <laughs> Bean Benitos. Um, Miami. Uh <laughs> oh god, that's you have to know that song. Living in the actual Miami, you better. That is right. Totally. <laughs> probably vacation spot um 
wherever it was, it, it's got to be better than my last text conversation. <laughs> I don't know. I think I curtains are Amazon very returning. Yeah, very yeah. intriguing. Yeah. Okay. All right. We got two more. Shmaniga. All right. Would you rather Lay speak, on me. speak for an entire day with a bad Aussie accent or speak for an entire day with a bad French accent? Or you can go longer than that if you wanted to. <laughs> well, I will. I will say, literally every single day um, that I'm in my kitchen and I pull out my kitchen knife, my chef knife or whatever you call oh, it. I know where knife. this is going. going. I go, That's not a knife. It's <laughs> a knife. Well, then I just, my brain just goes to Simpsons quotes, and then I just go. It's not a knife. That's a spoon. <laughs> oh, I've seen you've played knifey spoony before. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's, that's got to be like an old one. Like that's that's of a course, fucking of course. Yeah, yeah. That's like a Conan O'Brien like Simpsons joke. <laughs> yeah, yeah. See, I that's great. Oh, my Australian accent like is just bad. Like I don't mean to make it bad. It just is. So. Um, I'm going to try to read the last one with my Australian accent, which I've actually had okay. people write into this show to say how terrible it was. But let's yeah. let's see what we can do. Okay. The word show was good. You, sh sh show, show. Show. Sure. Yeah, that's sure. good. Thank I you. I don't know. Uh, yeah, yeah, <laughs> sure. Uh, yeah, exactly. It's good. Okay, here's the, la here's the last <laughs> one. The final one is, would you rather be a reverse merman or be I've a never, reverse center? I've never thought about those two things in reverse. That's hilarious. <laughs> this is one of our favorites. <laughs> oh, my God. Especially okay. the graphics that happen. <laughs> I'm not a bug guy and I'm not a fish guy. I'm. You're not going to see me holding up a fucking fish on a dating app. Okay. Um, okay. Okay. Um, okay. I'm not really a horse guy either, but like that looks kind of badass. I, it's 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 <laughs> sure. curious curious why the why the bottom half <laughs> is a man walking on two legs and two arms, mm -hmm. like a man on all fours, yeah. with just the torso of a horse. That's because it's a reverse centaur, Nick. That's why. <laughs> so in a regular centaur. <laughs> Is there, are there four horse legs and two man arms? Yes. Yes. Okay. Okay. So the appendages, the number of appendages hasn't changed. It's correct. That, yeah. I have yeah. thought of that before yeah. and that's just as upsetting. <laughs> I mean, think of Fantasia. Yeah. They all definitely have four horse legs and big horse butts, but then they have real, like, human torsos. I'm without. so glad you talked about the butts, Danica. They have um, giant horse butts, okay? <laughs> <laughs> also, just, just the sea is terrifying to me. And I know living I, I in Florida. Nope, nope, nope. I don't do living, the sea. Oh, you agree with me? Okay. I so, will not. The ocean is horrible. We do not do ocean. <laughs> Honestly, like. I would rather be lost in space than fucking in the middle of the ocean. Like yeah, at least in space, there's nothing it's, to hear you scream. Right. <laughs> Fine, like <laughs> I, I'm, I'm okay with that. Like I, I feel like we probably only know like what's like one percent of what's in the ocean. Like there's fucking fish with lights on their heads and shit. Like anglerfish, yeah. Like, no, that's mm -mm. that's terrifying. Um, think of. Think about all the, the fish in the ocean and everything using the bathroom in the ocean oh, right yeah. now. Yep. I do not like yep. it. Yep. It is the toilet. human toilet. Fish. I will fish not. There. Yeah. I yeah. cannot do it. And, and then you see like all these like commercials like Sandals Beach Resort and they're like laying out and I'm like, there is a fish literally peeing. I don't know. Fish pee, right? They do that. I'm like, what are you? Yeah. I, it's not attractive. <laughs> No, the the ocean sucks. Hor half horse, bottom half man is where it's at. Done. Okay. <laughs> yeah. oh, thank you for coming to our TED talk. Um, Lord. <laughs> I, I think why the ocean sucks. Thank you oh, for the coming to our centaur talk. talk. <laughs> it's our centaur talk. I love that so much. Well, Nick. <laughs> well, Dexter. Um, we have reached the end of another stream where I feel like we accomplished so much, but maybe nothing at all. Um, I don't know. 
we, I don't know we, either. That was fucking fun, though. Like, I can't believe it's been an hour already. An hour and seven minutes. And seven minutes. Oh, Jesus. Okay. I know. I'm sorry. I hope I didn't keep you guys from any of that. We have to go now. No, it's okay. <laughs> We're on your time, but we got to go. I oh, know. I'm just um, well, So before we do relinquish you back into the real world, any final thoughts you want to leave us with here today? Oh, man. I don't know. I feel like I kind of like word diarrhea all over this. So if there are any thoughts left, I don't know what they are. Okay. Fine. <laughs> okay. Um, <laughs> it works for us. I've said, I've said all of the words. <laughs> okay. Done. Um, so, all right. Uh, let's go over our upcoming guests that we have coming up. Oh, uh, Emo Night New Orleans, September 29th through that October is, 2nd. Yeah. Promotions. I love yeah, you. Yeah, we're, so we're doing we're we're doing a lot of a lot of shows. We've got more shows in the last half of this year than we've done, you know, in the last few years combined. So I'm looking forward to this stuff. This will be great. Um oh 303's playing that. That'll be fun. Yeah, we 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 did some shows with them back in the day. Fifi Dobson. Wow, cool. cool. Yeah, this will be this will be fun. This is the first I'm hearing of it, clearly. <laughs> oh, and also lots of blurs. I love these blurs. They're like, who's it gonna be? And you know, it's like yeah, three is, words long because look how tiny that, that blur is. Um Obama. Did you blur that out? No. Oh. It's a blur. Well, now I'm in, I, I'm intrigued. I I I don't know. Hopefully you like them. I don't know. <laughs> it's sugar gliders. Just the rest of them. <laughs> right. Sugar oh, I didn't forget. I didn't forget about my homework. I'm gonna figure out what that convention was all about and see if it's Good, still happening. Cool. If you forgot, I was gonna message you directly after this. And I'm gonna <laughs> bug you about it until eternity. So it's gonna be great. Um, let's go for our upcoming guests that we have coming up for June, July. We are already going into August, which is gonna be insanity. So on Thursday, we're welcoming Angie McPhee from Sons of Anarchy. Uh, next week from uh, oh. Kansas, we have John Elefante. Then we also Pittsburgh, have Pittsburgh, Kansas. <laughs> i'll ask him um i love it oh, uh, oh kansas the band oh, okay <laughs> carry on my wayward time um <laughs> we've dipped into the dad jokes we have to move on <laughs> no we have to move along is what happens okay so we also have jonah ray from mystery science theater 3000 performer jenny tallman we also have lucas rossi who is also a nashville guy uh we're welcoming back cloud this i love this uh zach good who is the new singer of smash mouth we also have chris value whoa whoa whoa, is... whoa 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 what? Yeah, what? Ex explain that what, what? Which one? Zach Good? has a new singer. Yes, and his name is Zach Good. Did not know that. Yep. This is the first I'm hearing of this, actually. There he is. <laughs> I, I, I saw videos of the meltdown from the old singer, Guy yes. Fieri, but yes. I haven't I haven't heard about this new singer. Fun. Yes. I can't wait to I can't wait to check that one out. I'm excited. He's he's great. So uh, yeah, we'll have to ask him about it. And you know, he's one degree from Shrek. So I like him a lot. Um, <laughs> and then we also added uh, Chris Ballew is going to be joining us on July 14th. And he is the singer from Presidents of the United States of America. So that should be fun. Shut up. I heard I heard he scores pornos now. Is that true? <laughs> We're going to find out. Because we'll um, <laughs> uh, I believe he's making children's music. But uh, children's music <laughs> porno. I don't know. <laughs> Which is great. Yeah, it's, it's a little bummed. Maybe I'm remembering this incredibly wrong. But. Oh, I hope I, you're right. I, lo I love that band. I, I I I ripped three strings off my guitar because of that band when I was a kid. I was like, who needs these other three? For to, to play what oh, song? All of them. That was their thing. They only used three. He had he had three strings on his guitar. The bass player only had two strings, and the drummer only had a splash cymbal. The one that goes right. Just one. Forgot about that. Oh my love god. Love it. Oh, living. Yeah. This is amazing. Cover well, uh, my band used to play their version of Video Killed the Radio Star. A cover of a cover? Yeah. <gasps> oh, we we did that a lot. We played Newfound Glory's version of Never Ending Story. Oh yeah. Presidency of the United States version of Video Killed the Radio Star. Yeah. Oh my god. Wait. I love it. Well, you have to tune in for that one. So that one's July 14th. Can't wait. Yay! Same Z's. There's a lot of good stuff happening. And then we'll get you back on um to talk about oceans and 
and math and convention. floppy disks and centaurs. I'll tell you about all the math that I've used in the next <laughs> three months or so. I cannot wait. Please um, scan all of your graphs, graph paper. Remember that shit? Oh my God. Yeah. Why? But why? But why? But anyway. Nick... Col college ruled graph paper. No. no. <laughs> <laughs> well everybody thank you guys so much for tuning in this has been an absolute blast my face hurts from smiling yeah, so much great. um Dan, it's good to have you thank back nick pleasure as always thanks for putting up with me this was this was a blast was as always yeah do it again until the next one guys have a wonderful rest of your week and we will see you on thursday oh wow good boy everybody good night